After the U.S. evacuated Bagram Air Base quietly, stealthily, the Pentagon says it will complete its pullout from Afghanistan early by the end of August, ahead of the September 11th deadline set by President Biden. The U.S. is ending its longest war with a silent march out the door. It seems to be coming from the top. President Biden didn't want to talk about Afghanistan at the White House yesterday. Are you worried that the Afghan government might fall? I think they have the capacity to be able to sustain the government. I fought on Afghanistan. Uh, I want to talk about happy things, man. Afghanistan. I'm not going to answer any more questions on Afghanistan. Look, it's 4th of July. After the withdrawal, the U.S. has committed to supporting Afghan forces financially, maintaining a military presence at the embassy and perhaps Kabul airport, and carrying out airstrikes in Afghanistan from the region. Critics say Afghanistan runs the same risk of Iraq, which collapsed into anarchy and extremist rule after American forces completely pulled out. Many Afghans fear the same will happen here. All uh, Afghanistan is going to be the same as before. No education, no freedom. So what do you think? Do you think the Americans should stay? I prefer to should stay, yeah. Because only about the soldiers of Afghanistan, like most, they get trained by American soldiers. They were together and anywhere. So as I see, like, if the Americans stay here, we're going to be more in peace. The Taliban have already been taking more territory. As units of the Afghan security forces collapse, some surrendering to the Taliban as U.S. forces leave. The Taliban captured several more districts in northern Afghanistan overnight, and aid agencies are warning that there could be a flow of refugees leaving this country, and they say the neighboring countries aren't prepared for it. Peter Savannah, back to you. So much to watch for there. We know you'll be on it. Richard Engel in Kabul, thank you so much. And the withdrawal of troops is a campaign promise kept for Joe Biden, but it also carries significant risks. NBC's Monica Alba is at the White House for us this morning with more. Monica, good morning. Good morning, Peter. When President Biden announced a withdrawal back in April, military experts warned leaving could cause the collapse of the U.S.-backed Afghan government. But the White House is sticking to its plan despite fears of future Taliban control without American forces there. Press Secretary Jen Psaki said Friday the administration is, quote, clear-eyed about the path forward and reiterated that after evaluating all possible outcomes, the president still views this as an unwinnable war. Hundreds of troops will remain in place to protect our diplomatic interests in the country. But beyond that, details on a longer term strategy are scarce. And there are concerns over what intelligence about potential terrorist attacks may be missed without a significant U.S. presence there. Senior officials have not confirmed what will happen to thousands of Afghan interpreters, drivers and engineers who helped the mission over the last two decades, only saying they will be relocated as deals with Central Asian countries are still being negotiated. Many may come to the United States under special immigrant visas. And meanwhile, the Pentagon says Scott Miller, the top general overseeing the troop exit on the ground, will leave his post later this month as America's longest war comes to a close. Peter, Savannah. A lot of questions for the White House's mm -hmm. administration still to answer. Monica Alva there for us this morning. Monica, thanks. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.